Okie dokie, back with you on the Bronx Buzz. And uh, this is the book. It is uh, the Bronx Artist, uh, I got to move out of the way, the Bronx Artist uh, Documentary Project. Uh, this was, to my mind, one of the most exciting Bronx Artist projects to come down the pike really at any time. And uh, we have uh, Dan Halbin and Judy Lane. They put it all together actually a few years ago now. So let's start with you, Judy, and tell us, um, first of all, welcome to the program and Thank tell you. us what, um, uh, what this was, what is the Bronx Artist Documentary Project? Well, that, Gary, was a project that uh, we thought up in 2013. My husband, Danny, got this idea originally to make paintings in the studios of Bronx artists to show them at work, uh, how they made their work, what they were making, uh, because visual artists don't get to be seen. You know, and then he realized that setting up his studio in an artist right. space easel. was setting up your easel was just not possible. There's no room. Um, and so it evolved into a photography project. It became a project that was worldwide. We had 30 Bronx photographers right. documenting 80 visual artists at work in their spaces, making whatever it was they did, whether it was outside on the street painting murals or inside sculpting or printmaking or painting. And it became an exhibition that showed at, uh, I think, six locations. Right. Out of the Bronx and White Plain, uh, Westchester. And, and, and then it became a book? Then it became a book because when an exhibition closes, it goes away. But if there's a book, it sticks around. So yes. and now And now there's a film. And, and so there was, there, was a, there was a showing. And uh, tell us about the film. And then we're going to ask Dan, as an artist, what he thinks. But let's, <laughs> fit, let's, get, let's get the mechanics of it together. Right. Well, uh, the, the work of this thing happened in 2014, January to June. We had wow. photographers. So, I can't yeah. even believe it was that long ago. My goodness, was, time yeah. flies. The photographers working, going all around the Bronx, shooting artists at work. And then we were uh, contacted by the people who run Yes the Bronx, an organization that promotes all things good in the Bronx. And they said, we want to document what you're doing. It's an amazing project. And so they funded two really wonderful filmmakers who started following a couple of the photographers around as they documented artists at work. And so they created a 22 minute documentary film about this project that really encapsulated the the energy of, of what was going on in the Bronx at that time and also the energy of the, of the project itself. We're, we're going to take a, a look at a clip from there, but um, Dan Halvin is, a, one, frankly, one of the most prolific artists in, and well-known artists in our, our borough of the Bronx. As an artist, what does this do for you? Because I know both of you are completely committed to uh, the, the greatness of uh, Bronx arts, but as an artist, when you have a photographer there and now it's gonna be, it's gonna be the book and the movie, you know, that kind of thing. What, what does that do for you as an artist? Well, there's, you know, uh, several things on several levels. One, as, as a, you know, I happen to be an artist that is not entirely happy working in isolation. I, you know, have been painting on the streets of the Bronx, so I, I'm lucky that way. I have connection with those around who, you know, people, uh, the, the people on the streets or whatever, the man on the street. But uh, also, you know, the Bronx is challenging because of, you know, being made up of many separate communities and not necessarily having a cultural center uh, you know, or a downtown, really. So, you know, the a, a part of my motivation in in uh, creating this project was to uh, find the opportunity to connect artists with each other and to give everyone a greater sense of of the cultural activity of our borough. And so, here are photographers who are artists, of course, in their own right, working with other with painters and other kinds of artists. So you've brought them together. Uh, that, and then of course, and then of course, defining within one rather extraordinary volume, uh, you know, ev everybody together. I mean, that, that, that creates power. That it creates was power. Strength. It was, you know, I think all of the artists uh, who were photographed for this project felt honored by the presence of these, you know, photographers who were devoting themselves to this to this objective. 
I really, you know, certainly felt it myself. Adi Talwar was my photographer uh, who turned out for the project, who, who turns out to be a photographer, you know, of the, of the highest. Oh, I was going to say caliber. a photographer, a Bronx photographer for the ages. Uh, and he's become, you know, a dear friend and he's my designated photographer for all of my artwork now. And we've been doing projects, uh, you know, since this time. So that that was the 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 legacy of this project for us, especially was was friendships and connections. And that's that was the motivation. And and certainly for us on a personal level, it has, you know, uh, endured. It has done that. Um, let, let's uh, uh, show the little piece. We have about a, a minute clip. Um, talk to me, um, Judy, about uh, Michael Camber, um, because mm. he's seen in this clip. He, um, of course, the Bronx um, Documentary Center uh, was instrumental in this program. So give us about a 20 second introduction and then we're going to roll the clip. Sure. Well, we couldn't have done it without Mike. And he opened the Bronx Documentary Center right around that time, around 2013. Uh, we had met him briefly at an event. He said, come on down. And then when the project evolved into a photography project, I was like, Danny, let's call that guy. <laughs> nice. Who, who else? Yeah. Let's, let's see what he's got and, to say. He told us that they had just started what they called the Bronx Photo League. And there were a group of photographers wanting to do projects together. It just was right. The it's timing. Fit. He said, right. come on a Friday. 22 photographers came and 20, and we presented our idea. 20 of them signed on right then right. and there. All right. So here it is. Uh, the film, uh, the Bronx artist. It's this. <laughs> right? yeah, so the film is called Artistic Energy, the Bronx. There you go, the Bronx Artist Documentary Project, Artistic Energy of the Bronx. Let's take a look. The guidelines that we gave the photographers were basically, uh, we're interested in seeing that creation of artwork, showing their space and their environment. We wanted the real experience, real Bronx artists making important art and catching that creative moment. This maybe? Yeah. I think the first one. You like this one? Yeah. This one with the. I, uh, when Mike came on board, it was understood that he would choose the photos. There were a few choices that we discussed, and we said, you know, this one really doesn't show the artist's face. And for us, the idea is that the public should see what the visual artists look like, because you don't get to see visual artists, you get to see their work. Okay, there it is. I'll give it a little applause. I guess this is the appropriate week to show it, considering that it was Oscar week. I don't know that it's oh, right. an Oscar right. award. Right. <laughs> but here in the Bronx, listen, um, one of the things that I learned, and maybe Danny, you can um, uh, really uh, take a, you know, really embellish this. One, one of the things that I learned was, and I know many of the artists, as you know, the size of the artist community in this incredibly creative borough oh. is frankly not to be believed. Right? It, and, it's and, that, and it's completely of another dimension now, you know, this, Ever since this we the project, years later, been well, there's been a great influx of artists from Brooklyn and other places yeah. that they're being priced out of or whatever. And then, you know, with the oh, awareness, yeah. the, you know, the while we were doing this, um, the, the, when we contacted the New York Times, about um, you know uh, covering this project, they said, "Well, we were plan. They were planning to do a pro uh, a uh, an article about uh, artists who have been in the Bronx for a year, uh, two years or less." So we we put them in touch with that segment of our project so that they were the ones that that article was focused on. And of course, now it's, you know, there's many more. There's well, You know, I, I, I'd be curious about that, um, given uh, the pandemic, you know, people mm. have been home. Yeah. Uh, maybe they need uh, more uh, outlets for self-expression. Uh, does either of you uh, think, we'll start with Judy, does either of you think that this has been quietly and without publicity, a prolific time for artists? We'll ask Judy first, then we'll ask Danny if it affected mm. him. Well, uh, that's an interesting question, um, because as you know, I've, I've been known to be a, an artist in my own right, a writer and composer, but for me, it has not been a prolific creative time. Not been. 
Very interesting. Uh, and Danny so, Mr. Mr. Halbin, on the other hand, or is there oh, no other hand? Well, I, you know, I kind of got the sense of the way things were going back, you know, at the beginning of this pandemic, and I, I start, I started working on a painting uh, that was three foot square. And then it grew to nine by three foot, and then it grew to. As five, the pandemic like, raged five, on, the thing got five, bigger and bigger. Got bigger, and that I, you exactly. know, I've been focused on that painting, uh, which I, which is much more uh, out of my imagination, and I believe it ain't the Bronx. Yeah, I believe is you know kind of also conveying some of of what my experience has been. You know, during, during, during this time. very difficult time. You know, I'm going to make a suggestion just, and I hadn't thought about this until we um, had this uh, discussion. You know, I'm always surrounded by Bronx books here. Mm -hmm. There's actually, I, I show these many, many more. These are oh, all wow. books by Bronx artists. I've got two more shelves. Right. I wonder, and, and many of these, in fact, just about all of them are people who've come on my television programs over the years. Maybe we should find, now there is a Bronx literary project. I mean, yeah. Charlie Vasquez runs that. I mean, we, we know that there's a lot going on, but maybe we ought to get some, I don't know, some photographers out to our Bronx authors. I mean, uh, th these are just some of them. Mm -hmm. There's another shelf up here, all of Bronx books. Mm -hmm. Never yeah. stop creating here in our Bronx. Yeah. Well, well, the and yeah. you know the BDC produces books of their exhibitions, right? The that's Captain true. Universe. Bronx Documentary Center. Listen, there's no end to it. I know you guys are working on the ways that more people can see the film. Uh, check out uh, the website is uh, Bronx Bronx Artist Doc Project dot Bronx, org. Right, Bronx Artist Doc, doc Project, Project dot org. Dot org. And you can get the book there, or you can get it on Amazon. Yep, you can get it anywhere or and um, contact us directly. Also. Uh, let's um, let's continue to love and support Bronx art. We need it. We are, we are it, and that's what well, we're doing. Gary, thank been, you, Gary. You've been supporting been such supporting. things for I, I don't know how many. Don't, decades. don't even <laughs> ask. <laughs> All right, we got we got to run. Judy Lane and uh, Judy Lane and Dan Halbin, thank you very much. That will do it for um, the Bronx Buzz this evening. And uh, this week on Bronx Talk, a very, very important uh, subject. We're going to talk about police reform and police tactics and what the heck is going on out here. Mm -hmm. I don't know how else to say it. Anyway, everybody stay well. We'll see you soon. Goodbye. Thank you.